My next guest says she knows what it's like to be on the other side of this issue. Like a lot of people, she grew up believing Planned Parenthood's lies. Abortion was no big deal because we're all just a clump of cells. It wasn't until later when she was at the Arizona State Fair, stopping by a Right to Life booth, that she looked at the, those little miniature babies in the womb and realized those weren't cells, they were children. Today, Debbie Lesko is one of the most passionate pro-life voices on the Hill. She's been serving as the representative for Arizona's 8th congressional district since 2018, and she has quickly become a leader on issues that we care about. She's a mother of three and a grandmother of four, but most importantly, she's a woman of deep, abiding faith, and we're pleased to have her here tonight. Congresswoman Lesko, welcome. Thank you for having me, Tony. You know, Congresswoman, as we focus on this issue of life, how important is this, do you think, in the overall scheme of things? I mean, we're faced with so many issues, economic issues, a, a pandemic. We've got rioting in our street. H how central is this to who we are as a people? Well, to me and many people, this is the most important issue because it talks about fundamentally life and protecting life. And who can argue with that? Unfortunately, my Democratic colleagues, for whatever reason, are voting uh, for legislation that would promote abortions. And it, it's just becoming very extreme and very concerning. I mean, the Republicans have put forth on the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives now at least 100 times we have asked Speaker Pelosi to call up a vote to protect the lives of babies born alive from a botched abortion, and they won't bring it up. The Democrats won't bring it up. They just think it's perfectly fine to let babies born alive from a botched abortion just die without any medical help. This is unconscionable. I just don't even understand it. And many of my Democratic colleagues uh, join me in Bible studies, uh, you know, it blows my mind. I do not understand it, why they would not protect innocent baby lives. It's beyond me. You know, Congresswoman, I, I know you've just been here in Washington two years, but you're not new to the fight for the sanctity of human life uh, serving in Arizona. Uh, you carried the same banner. I, I want to ask you this because your point on the Born Alive Infant Protection Act is so poignant because there's never been, in my view, a starker contrast between the two parties when it comes down to, as you described, that they're not even willing to give medical assistance to a baby who survives an abortion attempt. They would rather let that baby die than admit that it is a human life. Yes, it, it's very, I'm very sad about it because I, I, again, I really don't understand my Democrat counterparts. Even Speaker Pelosi says she's a Catholic. Well, Catholics are pro-life. Most Hispanics are Catholics and they're pro-life. And this is such an important issue to the majority of America. I just don't think they know about it. Just like you said in the opening, people are being lied to. And just like all the time Planned Parenthood, when I was younger, said, oh, it's just a clump of cells. It looks like a tadpole. That's all it is. Well, they were lying to me. And they're lying to millions of Americans. And that's why it's so important. And I want to thank you and your organization for pointing out the difference between what Republicans and President Trump believe in and what the Democrats and Joe Biden believe in. I mean, they're, the Joe Biden and the Democrats are totally in support of abortions up to the very last minute. And now, as I just said, they also think it's just perfectly fine to let a baby born alive from a botched abortion either sit on a counter and die on their own or being thrown in a garbage can. Yeah. This, this is terrible. I, I can't imagine an issue that's more important for me in America than protecting everyone's lives. Yeah, we, as we describe, it's birthday abortion now. They will do abortions up to the day of birth. Uh, Congresswoman, we're almost out of time, but the 
the issue of the courts is so central to this. I do think the other, sti- other side understands the importance of the court because we've seen their reaction to President Trump's two nominations to the Supreme Court that were obviously confirmed. But this issue of the sanctity of human life, I mean, we're so close to seeing America return to being a predominantly pro-life nation. It could happen after the next election, couldn't it? You are totally right, Tony. We need to reelect President Trump because he he will nominate pro-life, conservative, constitutional judges for the Supreme Court. And you've already heard from the left. If Joe Biden is elected and if they get the House and the Democrats get the Senate, they're going to ram through all kinds of radical pro-abortion, anti-life legislation. They also said they want to increase the number of judges on the on the Supreme Court so they can stack it in their favor. They also want to make D.C., Washington, D.C., a state so they can automatically get two more Democrat senators to stack the deck. This election is the most important election in my entire lifetime. It really is about the future of our nation the future of life, the future of traditional family values, of law and order. I I can't tell you how greatly, oh, I'm just in angst because we need to win. Pro-life, pro-freedom, pro-religious freedom needs to win for the sake of our country. And that is not an exaggeration at all. I am 100% in agreement with you. Congresswoman Debbie Lasko, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. And I appreciate your leadership. Continue leading for the sanctity of life on Capitol Hill. I will.